This is the new 2024 Subaru WRX TR, and it's the latest high performance version of the new Subaru WRX with a sticker price of around $43,000. That's big money for a WRX, but this car has all the right upgrades over the standard car. And today I'm going to review the new WRX TR and I'll cover if it's worth it. And I'll show you all of its quirks and features. Today's video is sponsored by Cars and Bids, which is my online car auction website for modern enthusiast cars. So far, Cars and Bids has sold almost $500 million worth of cars. All sorts of special and cool stuff like this and this and this and this. If you're looking to sell your enthusiast car, reach a vast audience at carsandbids.com. All right, time for the quirks and features of the new WRX TR, which is the new top performance trim level of the new Subaru WRX, which came out for the 22 model year. Now, there still is a trim level above the TR, the Grand Touring, but it's an automatic, so we don't talk about it. Like I said, the TR has a sticker price of around $43,000, which is pretty pricey, but it does add a lot of goodies over the standard car. Starting with the brakes, you get improved Brembo brakes with six piston calipers up front and enlarged brake rotors and better brake pads for improved stopping power. Behind the brakes, you also have stiffened suspension. This will probably result in a harsher ride, but also improved handling, and you have retuned suspension damping rates with the same goal in mind. The TR also gets its own unique wheel design. These 19-inch wheels are specific to the TR, are different from other WRX models, and I think they look aggressive and cool. I really like them over the standard wheels. Another change over the standard WRX, no more sunroof. Other WRX models offer a sunroof, but it's not available on the TR, presumably for weight savings or to lower the center of gravity since this is the high performance model. Now, one unusual item on the outside, there's no badging anywhere on the car that says TR. This is the high performance version of the WRX that you're supposed to aspire to, but it's not bragging anywhere about its vaunted position in the WRX lineup. As a result, it's a performance model, but a very subtle one, at least from the outside. As for upgrades to the WRX TR on the inside, number one, a retuned steering rack for better steering ratio, sharper steering, for this, the performance model. You also have Recaro seats, as you can see, these supportive bucket seats with thick side bolstering. They look cool. Alcantara seat centers, Recaro stitched into the backrest, a very different seat from the standard WRX. And the driver's seat is even power operated, which is a nice touch in what's ultimately a compact car to have that power driver's seat. The other notable change in here, the transmission, the TR is only offered with a six-speed manual and automatic is not available in this performance version, which is pretty cool. Not too many cars are manual only these days, but this one is. As for the powertrain, unfortunately, no changes here. Even though this is the performance model, it still has the same engine from the standard WRX. The good news is it's a pretty great one. 2.4 liter turbocharged flat four makes about 270 horsepower and about 260 pound-feet of torque. I love this engine. More on that when I drive the car, but no extra power in the TR even though it's the performance model. And on that subject, let's talk about what TR means. Subaru first used TR a while ago on a previous WRX generation. It was the base spec version. TR stood for track ready, and it came without a lot of upgrades because they knew you were gonna modify it and take all that stuff off anyway. So it was like the stripper base model version of the car. Now it's the high performance version with all the cool stuff. They just resurrected the TR our name, even though it doesn't really mean the same thing. And as for pricing, like I said, around $43,000. Now, a base WRX starts around $34,000, and the premium trim is around $36,000. So this is a pretty big price hike from those models, although those are a true bargain. They are cheaper than a Honda Civic Type R by 10 grand. The base WRX is even cheaper than the Hyundai Elantra N, which is a front-wheel drive car, of course. 
course, the WRX is an all-wheel drive car, which is a nice benefit, and this powertrain makes it exceptionally fast. Zero to 60 in the low to mid five second range. So even though Subaru says they won't be making an ultra high performance STI version of this WRX, even the standard WRX engine is pretty good. And those base models are a pretty good deal, even if you don't want to spring for the extra performance stuff in the TR. And next, I'm moving beyond all of the TR stuff and onto some of the quirks and features. Let's start on the outside with the cladding. Yes, the new WRX still has the controversial cladding, specifically the plastic over the wheel arches that people complained about when this car first came out. These have grown on me rapidly. I actually like how they look. In fact, I really like how the overall new WRX looks. This is a very controversial take. A lot of people have been complaining about this car styling, but I really love it. The cladding, the body, the overall design, I really legitimately like it. Now, with that said, even I think the cladding does go a little far in the back. You can see it juts out pretty far, like several inches beyond the trunk. You have this plastic cladded bumper. It seems a little excessive. There are rear diffusers, and then there's this. It seems like a bit much for this car, and the plastic doesn't really add to the look. With that said, in the diffuser, you do have this little cutout for where tuner kids will put a third brake light or a fog light because they think it looks cool. And frankly, they're right. It does look cool, and Subaru has a spot ready for them. And next up, we move inside the new TR, and to do that, take a look at the key fob where the unlock button is the Subaru logo. The lock button is a lock button, but the unlock button is Subaru. <laughs> Anyway, you climb in and you sit in these wonderful Recaro seats, and the first thing you notice is, well, the interior kind of matches the car. WRX was never about a very nice, high-quality interior, just a functional one. It was about spending money on speed and performance more than niceness, and so this car has that. You get some plastic in here, you get some materials that aren't that nice, but they're fine for a WRX. Worth pointing out, though, that the TR, given its higher price point, kind of demands a little bit of a nicer interior, and Subaru delivers by sticking this Alcantara piece on the passenger side dashboard. <laughs> that's, that's how they make it classy. And there's even a corresponding one on the driver side dashboard right here. It is tremendously small, no one will ever notice it, but it classes up that six inch space between the gauge cluster and the door panel. Now, with that in mind, the interior of this car, being fairly basic, fairly functional, is not exactly full of interesting quirks and features, but there are a few. The most interesting is definitely the rear window lockout. Check this out. You're looking at the driver door panel. You can see all four window switches are illuminated, but you press the rear window lockout, and the rear window switch illumination turns off. To remind you, those windows are no longer available. Press it again, and they turn back on and you can turn it on or off, which is kind of a neat idea. It's easier to see and know that you've turned off the rear windows since they're not lighting up in the switches. Also interesting in this car in the center console, you have USB-A, USB-C, and an aux port, which I don't frequently see in brand new cars, but it's in here in case you want to plug in your device using an aux cable from the old days. But probably the biggest news in the new WRX in general is the infotainment system. You have this large, vertically oriented infotainment system in the center control stack that basically dominates the whole thing and takes up virtually all of the controls, including the climate controls. Now, typically I complain about the climate controls migrating into a screen, but here the implementation is pretty good. For one thing, you still have physical buttons to change the climate temperature. You can see on either side, driver or passenger, these red and blue arrows, and physical buttons to turn on the front windshield defogger and the rear defroster. So some physical buttons for the important stuff, and the rest is pretty easy to figure out. You just tap the screen to increase the fan speed, for instance, turn on the heated seats. It's all fairly simple. If you want more climate control, you do have to expand the screen, but it's for lesser used functions like the exact placement of the airflow and things like that. Generally speaking, the climate control at the bottom is fine,
Still would prefer physical buttons for everything, but it works. Now, the rest of the infotainment system is certainly kind of interesting. It's split into basically three portions. At the bottom, you have the climate controls, like I mentioned. In the middle, you have all of your apps. So this is like your media player, shows you what music is playing, the radio, your navigation, and also this is where you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You see it right here in this large center panel. Interestingly, this is also where you add your birthday day and anniversary reminders. This is something that has been in Subarus for many years. You can add a reminder for a birthday or an anniversary. So when you get in the car that morning to go to work, it lets you know, hey, it's your spouse's birthday, your child's birthday, your wedding anniversary, whatever. It's in there and stored. And so you're certain to see it when you get in your car. A very Subaru quirk and or feature. Now, at the top of this vertical infotainment screen, you have a little info panel that you can adjust exactly what it's showing. It's a small panel, you can't see a lot of things at once, but you can see various different items like the street you're on, the weather in your area, some vehicle gauges, that sort of thing, all shown on the top of this panel. Now, as for the gauge cluster, the actual gauges are, actual gauges. Old school, there's no gauge cluster screen here. You have traditional fixed gauges that are real, like you wouldn't expect maybe in a newer car, but it's there. Now, you do have a full color screen in between the gauges, and the funny thing about this screen is its configurability is tremendously limited to only this tiny little portion at the very top of the screen. That is all you can change in this gauge cluster screen. It's almost laughable. Got to be the smallest configurable panel in the entire car industry. It's going to be more than an inch by a quarter of an inch, but you can change at least something in your gauge cluster display screen. It doesn't go all out, doesn't give you all you might want, but then again, neither does the rest of this interior. And that's kind of what you'd expect from a WRX. You don't have, for example, a heads up display in this car. You don't have cooled or ventilated seats in this car or a wireless charging pad. You don't get all of the nice modern luxury car goodies. The backup camera is only a backup camera, no multiple angles, no top down. You don't get all that stuff, but you're not necessarily expecting it. It's a WRX. You're buying this car to go fast and have fun and have all of the technology basics. And in that sense, this car delivers. It gives you what you need, even though it doesn't go the extra mile and give you a lot of high-end luxuries. That just wouldn't be a WRX, and most buyers aren't looking for it anyway. Now, one thing you probably do want and expect from a WRX is back seat space, because that's probably one of the reasons you're buying this car over a true two-door sports car like a BRZ or a new Supra or a new Nissan Z. You want four doors and real back seats for the added practicality. And in that area, the new WRX delivers surprisingly well. It's a surprisingly large back seat with decent room for your legs, for your knees, and for your head. It's not huge, but it's bigger than you would think for an economy car, which is what the WRX is based on, the Subaru Impreza, and it really is decent back seat space in here. It makes it a pretty practical performance car. Unfortunately, there aren't that many amenities back here. You do not have, for example, rear seat climate controls or even climate vents. You got none of that stuff. You do have power ports back here, USB a and USB-C, but that's about it in terms of your niceties and luxuries. Now, you do have cup holders. They're integrated into the door panel, as you can see on each side, and there's more cup holders in the center armrest. Fold it down, and there they are to add to your convenience. But not too many high-end amenities in back. And you lose the Recaro seats in back since it's a bench seat and not buckets. But you do have Alcantara seat centers that sort of look like, and they're sort of shaped like sports seats. And you also have red stitching back here that gives it the performance car feel you'd expect, even though you're sitting in the back. And finally, we move on to the cargo area, the trunk in the new WRX TR. You pop it open, it opens up, and you can see it's actually surprisingly larger than you might expect. It goes pretty deep down in there, and you got a decent amount of space where you can store stuff. And the rear seats fold down in case you're looking for more cargo space. Unfortunately, they don't fold from back here. You got to go around to the back seats specifically and fold them down, but you do have a decent sized cargo storage area here. One drawback of this new WRX, at least 
here in North America, the sedan is the only body style. In other markets, there is a station wagon version, or at least you can call it a hatchback, but regardless of what it is, it does bring more cargo space and a tailgate, but not here, we only get the sedan. Thankfully, practical car with a decent back seat and a fairly large cargo area. All right, driving the new WRX TR. Now, if you have watched some of my videos and some of my commentary, you may already know that I love the new WRX. When it first came out, I thought it was heinous, ugly, just like everyone else did. And then the design grew on me. And then I went and drove it and I absolutely fell in love. I love the powertrain. I love the steering. I love the handling. I love everything about this car. And I truly do like how it looks. I think it looks great. I actually think it's maybe the best looking WRX, which I understand is controversial, but the 091 was, huh. Anyway, this is just an excellent car. And let me explain why. First off the engine, I just love this engine. 271 horsepower, turbo flat four. 271 horsepower can be delivered in a lot of ways. It can be in a Camry V6 where it's kind of dull, where it doesn't really do much and isn't very exciting. In this car, it, is, it just feels so potent and capable. If you get this thing up just a little bit in the rev range, you can get so much power out of it, even in higher gears, and it just feels so fast. I know they're not doing a new STI, I think that's insane, but this car feels faster than it zero to 60 times suggests, and it feels fast enough that I don't necessarily need an STI, which I never, ever, ever thought I would say. I, I always just felt that would be a great component of this, WRX lineup forever. Well, this car makes me feel differently. I just love this engine. It is very smooth in its power delivery. It is very direct in its power delivery. The throttle response is excellent. There's just an enormous amount of great things about this powertrain. Then there's the steering and handling. It's fantastic. In the base car, it's fantastic. In the TR, you can feel the steering is quicker, unquestionably. Um, the steering quicker inputs and the car changes directions quicker when you turn the wheel. There's no doubt about that. Almost to the point where it's actually a little bit frenetic, but with good car control, you can make it work and it is more rewarding. It's just quicker and it just responds better. So steering is also excellent. Braking is great. I also think this car rides reasonably well considering it's a sporty performance sedan. The interior is nice. This Recaro seat is fantastic. Driving position is good. And also even though WRXs are kind of notoriously cheap, that's how they operate. They're like cheap speed. Um, the interior doesn't like creak and rattle. It's not tremendously nice, but it's, it's also just like, it's put together reasonably well and it feels good. So are there drawbacks? Here's the interesting thing. If I were to label a drawback, I would say it's the TR specifically, which is two specific things. Number one, the ride. Steering is better. Love how the wheels look. Love the Recaro seats. Those are some upgrades to the TR. The ride is harsh. It's much harsher. And the problem that I have with that is, it's probably, the sport suspension probably makes it better for handling. It probably, you go on a curvy road or a racetrack and you probably are throwing this thing around better because of that sport suspension, but the stiffer springs and the change in the damper rate unquestionably makes this car ride rougher. And the problem I have is, this was never a car that was for racetrack use. This isn't a GT3 RS. The WRX is driven by people who vape to their military base. And so it's not, it's a road car that is supposed to be fun. And so to me, that's a little bit of a knock on the TR. It makes it a little less livable. Then you add in the price. So you're paying more and you're getting more performance stuff. You're getting the brakes, you're getting the handling, the suspension, the seats, but you're paying quite a bit more and you're kind of compromising ride quality. So I guess what I would say here is you get the TR if what you really want is the optimum top of the range, you know, most performancey WRX, but you are gonna make some concessions. And so only do that if you want to get the top of the range WRX. If you just want the power and the performance, the other models could serve you well and serve you fantastically. But I do have to wonder if you're willing to pay this much and make concessions on ride quality for 43 grand, isn't there like a true two-door sports car that you can find that maybe is a little better? If it was me buying a WRX, I would get like a, a base or a premium or a limited. That, that's sort of the sweet spot of it to me. You get all the great benefit of the power and the performance of the great engine. You get good suspension, not as good, but not as harsh. And it's a more daily drivable car. 
That's how I feel about it. The TR is great, but maybe a little too extreme for the WRX's purpose. And so that's the new 2024 Subaru WRX TR. I love this car. It's a great performance sedan, and I just love the new WRX. It is my favorite WRX ever. That is a controversial opinion, but it is mine. I'm not sure if I would get the TR given the price tag and the harsh ride, but I would definitely get a new WRX in general over just about anything else. Anyway, now it's time to give the new WRX TR a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 56 out of 100, which puts the new WRX TR here against some rivals. It's about in the middle of the pack, losing out to true sports cars like the new Nissan Z and more expensive stuff like the Civic Type R, but it's close to the Volkswagen GTI, which makes sense. The new WRX's biggest drawback is styling, which I personally actually like, but most people really don't. And it loses some points in practicality to the GTI, which offers a hatchback body style. As for the TR specifically, it handles better than the standard WRX but the price bump is hard to justify, so it only ties the regular model. But overall, the new WRX in general is one of my favorite modern performance cars, as I really enjoy the powertrain and the tossability.